The consultation questions. Number 21. We are seeking views on whether we should change the way that aids and appliances are taken into account when determining entitlement to the daily living component of PIP. In the event that we do decide to make such changes, we need your views on the five broad options for reforming how aids and appliances are taken into consideration, including the practical, operational and financial suitability, feasibility and acceptability of each option. You do not need to limit your response to these five options, and we welcome additional suggestions. The options are not mutually exclusive and could be combined. Number 22. If we decide to make any changes to the way in which aids and appliances are used to determine entitlement to the daily living component, Anyone who has been awarded points for needing aids and appliances, as set out in their decision letter, could be affected. However, none of the five reform options we have sent out would apply to current claimants until the changes come into effect, and they are eligible for review or report a change of circumstances. Current system. A monthly payment at the relevant weekly rate for claimants who meet or exceed the eligibility threshold for the daily living component including through the use of aids and appliances. In the majority of activities, the aids and appliances descriptors are awarded two points. An individual may therefore receive an award, either the standard or enhanced rate, solely through points scored from the use of aids and appliances. It would also act as a passport to the relevant benefits or benefit premia and exempt claimants from the benefit cap. Question 1. What are your views on the current system and its advantages and disadvantages compared to options 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5? In particular, we would welcome comments on receiving a regular, fixed monthly sum, budgeting on a monthly basis, having to save to purchase aids and appliances and having no restrictions on how the benefit can be spent but potentially lower purchasing power. Number 23. If we do decide to make changes to the way that aids and appliances are taken into account 
when determining entitlement to the daily living component, we have identified five possible options for change. We are also interested in other suggestions individuals or organisations may have. Option 1. A lump sum payment for claimants who meet or exceed the eligibility point threshold for the daily living component but score all of their points from aids and appliances. The value of this lump sum could be less than the cumulative value of the equivalent monthly payments. It could be discretionary and could be restricted. For example, through the use of vouchers. It would not act as a passport to any other benefit or benefit premium and would not exempt claimants from the benefit cap. Claimants scoring at least some points from other descriptors would be paid at the relevant weekly rate, as now. Number 24. This option is based on evidence that many claimants who score all their points through aids and appliances may have low to moderate one-off costs from purchasing aids and appliances and no or limited ongoing costs. It would help these claimants to purchase the aids and appliances they need immediately, rather than making them save their monthly payments, potentially for a significant period. A lower, potentially discretionary lump sum would better target resources and reflect that, on average, these claimants are likely to have lower costs. The use of vouchers could allow the department to secure better prices. The award could be periodic, recognising that claimants may need to repair or replace their aids or appliances. Question 2. What are your views on the advantages and disadvantages of option 1 compared to the current system? And options 2, 3, 4 and 5. In particular, we would welcome comments on targeting resources through a lump sum which would be less than the cumulative value of the equivalent monthly payments. And whether this should be a fixed or discretionary amount. The lack of passporting and exemption from the benefit cap. Being able to purchase aids and appliances immediately. Restricting what the benefit could be spent on through the use of vouchers. But potentially increasing value for money and... A periodic payment 
recognizing that aids and appliances may need to be serviced or replaced. Option two. A monthly payment below the equivalent weekly rate for claimants who meet or exceed the eligibility point threshold for the daily living component at either rate but score all of their points from aids and appliances. This payment would not act as a passport to any other benefit or benefit premia and would not exempt claimants from the benefit cap. Claimants scoring at least some points from other descriptors would be paid at the existing weekly rate. Number 25. This option would be more consistent with the current system, with claimants continuing to receive an ongoing monthly payment. This could benefit claimants who have some ongoing costs and or who find it difficult to budget for large annual payments. It would be a fixed amount for all claimants eligible for the same rate and there would be no restriction on spending, thereby limiting the scope for targeting the benefit and increasing value for money. The lower rate would reflect that, on average, these claimants' costs are likely to be lower than others. Question 3. What are your views on the advantages and disadvantages of option 2 compared to the current system and options 1, 3, 4 and 5? In particular, we would welcome comments on a lower weekly rate than the equivalent rate for those scoring the same points but from other descriptors. a fixed award as opposed to a discretionary award outlined in option 1 the lack of passporting and exemption from the benefit cap and No restrictions on what the benefit can be spent on, but potentially with lower purchasing power.